The Brown Park Podcast is brought to you by Grow Clinics. They're leading the way in hair loss treatments in Australia and New Zealand. And for more information, go to growclinics.com.au. Hello. Good day, mates. How are you today? Very good. Today, uh, we're going to catch up with a mate of mine who I used to work with in Sydney radio, but has gone on to become one of the biggest media stars in the UAE. United Arab Emirates, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> Thanks for the elaboration there. <laughs> The Brown Box Podcast. Question. Yeah. Did you always want to be in radio? Was that always your calling? It was. When I was a kid, um, I I used to record uh, <laughs> music from the radio onto cassettes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to listen to, um, what was it, Barry Bissell's Take 40 Australia. Oh, my God. That rings some bells. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to record the songs, cut him out and put me in it. Did you really? Yeah, <laughs> and make my own mixtapes from the radio. I've still actually got one. We're going to need some of that. No, um, so yeah, I, I always, I always wanted to, and then I got diverted and went into the banking industry before I finally went. You know what? I should do radio. That's what I've always wanted to do. And did your teachers yeah. ever say you had a voice for radio? Or I mean, how did that come about? Or you just, you just knew you had dulcet tones? No, I just knew that I wanted to do it. I didn't care about my voice. I just wanted to be in it. Who so. was your, who was your hero growing up from uh, as a DJ or radio? personality um i get there was a guy called rick dees there was rick dees in the weekly top 40 from america right so it wasn't john laws or anything oh god no sorry lawsy i don't know you but no it wasn't it oh surprising i wouldn't mind lawsy's money oh that'd be all right (laughs) until we have gold microphones we are not going to stop brown pop special guest so today's guest is a gentleman by the name of chris fade I started out working with him uh, in the 2000s in Sydney, um, but he left the country and went to Dubai, where he has gone on to become one of the biggest media stars in the country. And I thought, we need to get this guy on and talk to him because... We can was... unpack your jealousy in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, let's get him on. Here we go. Chris Fade, how you going, man? G'day, mate. So good to be here. Um Thanks for the uh, thanks for the invite, old friend of mine. Yes. Um, now, just just to set the scene, where are you? What are you doing? Do you want to see? <laughs> well, let me just do a quick flip. Quick flip. No. Yeah. We're in the Maldives, in the Maldives, Maldives, as we say Maldives. Yeah. in Australia. Yeah. You know? He's on his honeymoon and he's decided to come onto a podcast. How does um your your other half feel about <laughs> you dedicating time to a podcast? I think she's used to it. We've been together for eight years. She knows how I roll. She knows that I'm always wanting to do stuff like this. So yeah, uh, and the day it, six in too. So, but you know, everything that's needed to be done has been done, <laughs> and she's had enough of him, and she's ready to go home. <laughs> we did really well, actually. There was no arguments up until day six, the morning of. It's like we had a little argument. Um, yeah, all fine now. But I just figured, like, that's the sign that okay, we need to, to talk to other people. Yeah, when you said, hey, I'm going to go and do a podcast because I need to speak to other people apart from you. That's right. <laughs> well played. Now, the Chris Fade story is a very interesting one. We we worked together, it's got to have been 15 years ago. Yeah. Over 15 years 2005 ago. 2005-ish, I would say, yeah. About 15, yeah. maybe 16 years ago. When I managed to snaffle a job doing breakfast, right, on, on a station called The Edge in Sydney, and there's this guy who was doing uh, the cars at that stage, I think. Just driving the promo car around, yeah. Yep, and getting on air and, and doing whatever he could. Like, he was literally the man about town. If you wanted him to do something, he would do it. And now, uh, 15 years later, probably one of the biggest media identities in Dubai, or the United mm-hmm. Arab Emirates. It's nuts. I've got a Madame Tussauds wax figure. Go, go. go <laughs> That's when you know you've made it, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> How? Well, that, yeah. Yeah, let's go back. Um, wh- how do you look back on that time uh, to compare to how far you've come now? Because not only, and if you don't know, like you're, you, you host the number one radio show in Dubai, but you've also got your own empire basically called Fade Fit that you've started from the ground up. Um, and that was all because you wanted to lose weight yourself and, and motivate other people to do it. Yeah, man, the journey's been, it's been surreal. I don't know, like, you know, and... Things have moved so fast that you don't really have time. I'm learning as I get older now to actually enjoy the moments because we don't enjoy the moments. I feel like, you know, I'll do something that's pretty epic 
and then I'll just move on to the next thing and I don't actually take in what I just accomplished or what I just did. And um, be it small or big, you know, we just keep moving on. So, you know, back in 2005 when, when we were both at the same radio station, I remember just wanting to get into radio. I was 26 at the time and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I dropped out of school and for four or five years I was just bumming around, as you'd say, like, you know, but I was loving life. I was a barista. I was working as a clean, car cleaner at Crystal Car Wash. I was I was doing a bunch of jobs and then... I landed the, the job of driving the promotional vehicle for the radio station and giving out free cans of Coke and, and chips out on the streets, right? And um, I didn't want to get into radio even then. I just enjoyed that. It was paying me all right. It was a cruisy job, mm-hmm. and it, sort of, it was making what I wanted to do at that time. And then eventually I started seeing what, like, the guys, what you were doing in the radio studio, and I was like, man, that looks so fun. And then, you know, just spending enough time around a lot of the presenters – including yourself, like I started to really embrace like, wow, this is such a great craft. I want to learn how to do this. Mm. And rather than go on a sort of like the whole radio school or, or journalism for university, I just spent so much time with the other mm. presenters and many of them, which I'm so grateful for, were so willing to help. Like just come sit in the studio and you just watch someone do it. Mm. So, you know, I did that for a while whilst I was driving the car around and then our good old friend Charlie Fox yeah, the program, legend in the radio industry, absolutely. Legend. So who's Charlie Fox? Yeah, he's a he's a he's a behemoth. He's a legend in the industry. He's just a good guy. He I don't know if you remember, but the, the boss that we had at the time told us or told me we're not going to put you on the radio at any prime time, so you may as well just give up now. And then <laughs> really, <laughs> and then he got fired. Yeah, and, and then Charlie came in. Yeah, and, and literally Charlie came in, and I still remember him. He just came up and he goes. Who are you? I said, I'm Chris. I like you. All right. And yeah. that was it. And then within six months, he said to me, I want you on the radio. And then I was doing sort of radio for the first time, sounding pretty like horrible, but, you know, we all started off somewhere. Oh, my God. Then, Amen. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember shitting myself the first time I walked into that. So you were one of the first people I met when I moved to Sydney. And I remember sitting at a table and there's him and another and another girl that I'm still friends with now called Polly. Um, and, and I was petrified because I was this, I had no idea I'd come from Townsville and I was about to walk into Sydney radio and everyone like, you know, Chris is a loud personality. And yeah. so is Polly. And I've just sort of gone off, oh, fuck, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and our boss, this Charlie Fox said the next day, he goes, I left that meeting and I said to everybody at that table, this guy's not going to work out. I don't know how, I don't know what I'm going to do, but he's, I don't know how he's going to go on the air the next day. What about you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it was funny. But you did, you were, you were, I remember when I heard you doing radio, I was like, man, this guy's so good. Like I felt like you had been doing it for, how long had you been doing it? Like before you got to uh, Sydney? Oh, about five years. Huh? So I yeah, felt like it yeah. was more. Well, I've got this funny story about Chris and I don't know whether you remember this one, but um, he, you filled in. <clears throat> I went on holidays. I had, I had to go on, I think I went to America or something and I, I, he filled in with, with Polly, oh. with our mate Polly. And I got a, t- oh no, I was in New Zealand and I got a phone call from somebody going, Oh my God, you should hear what Chris has just done on the radio. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it was Polly's, a, Polly's fact hunt. Fact hunt. <laughs> oh, I like it, and it didn't guess, work. Guess what I said? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember that vividly because Polly and I we're still good mates as well. Um, yeah, yeah. She came into the studio, and I, I still remember saying this when she walked in. This is live on air. I was like, "Oh, you can smell her when she walks into the studio." And yeah. I meant because she was she had like all these like perfume on. Yeah, and I'm like. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to play Polly's Facts. And then instead of saying hunt, I said the C word accidentally. Yeah. And she just lost it because she wasn't, you know, in radio, they teach you in radio that if you do make a mistake, just keep moving on. Like, yeah. don't, because yeah. maybe people didn't hear it. But because yeah. Polly was working in the promotions department, she had no idea about radio. And she yeah. lost it. Oh my gosh, what did you just say? <laughs> you brought like, so much light to this moment. 
And, and, and I, rem- I remember then Vic LaRusso was doing the helicopter reports and he yeah, yeah. chimed in and was just like, yeah, we heard what you said. And then um, Jonesy and Amanda, at the, at, they were next door. They came yeah. in and just gave me a round of applause. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm filling in for you and I've just done this. What an idiot. Way to but- make an impact. Hey, it way to make an impact. It worked, man. Yeah. He's now, <laughs> and that's how he got the job in Dubai. No, um, <laughs> that's how you polarize a crowd. <laughs> how did the job in Dubai come about? Because like uh, we, we were chatting off off air, your story is fascinating because you literally, like we said, we you went from driving the cars to becoming one of the big, biggest media personalities in the UAE. It was weird. Like I had done, I was on the edge. I was on that radio station for about five years, and I was bouncing around from doing nights to drive to doing mornings to breakfast sometimes. And then I, I wanted to, you know, I remember Charlie actually sitting down with me going, hey, like, you've really done everything here. You know, mm-hmm. what else do you want to do? Like, you've got to move on. And so at that time, I probably wanted to go to some of the other radio stations, like a competitor network, yeah. right? But now I don't know if this is just me, but, like, I felt like, you know, being, I don't know if you remember the whole Cronulla Rides things back then. I'm a Lebanese guy. Like, I don't know. If, I didn't mm-hmm. want to call the ethnic car, but I thought it was hard to get a job in some of those radio stations back then, right? I think yeah. things have changed yeah. in the last 15 years, right? So, you know, I remember they were hearing my demos, they were liking my demos, and then we would meet, and then it just didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go. Yeah, and, really. it happened, and it happened a few times, right? And then eventually I remember just thinking to myself, you know what, I don't know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to move out. I didn't want to go out to Bathurst. I didn't want to go anywhere. Like I thought to myself, I want to stay in Sydney. But then the opportunity came up where that demo that I had going around got put in front of the Virgin Radio CEO and um, his name's Ian and he he's an Australian guy that runs all the Virgin Radio international radio stations and there's more than like, you know, 25 of them across the world. Mm. So he sat down with me and he goes, hey, I love your thing. I love what you're doing. Um if you're interested in moving outside of Australia, I've got two jobs, uh, Malaysia, uh, Kuala Lumpur, or I've got a new radio station in Dubai that we're setting up. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. I, I was about 28, 29 years old, I think, 28 years old. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. And I ended up choosing Dubai. It was the reason why I chose Dubai was now there was nothing on Dubai about, you know, 14, mm. 13 years ago. It wasn't like it is now. Um, I, I, I knew it was four hours away from Lebanon. I'm Lebanese. So I thought, you know what? I'll go out there. I'll improve my Arabic. I'll go see the motherland. And I got to start a Virgin radio station. Rarely in your radio career do you get to start a new radio yeah, station. Yeah, that sounds like, really cool. Yeah. It is. Awesome. Yeah, and I thought oh, I'll go do it for a couple of years. So I um, you know, I packed my bags. I said bye to mum and dad. They were, they were pretty shocked. They were like, what are you doing? I said, I'll oh, give me a couple of years. Um, I went over with a girl that I had just met within six months. We had married because they had told us that if you wanted to live together in Dubai that 15 years ago, 14 years ago, that you had to be married to one another. So I stupidly, but whatever, got married. Is that still the case now? Do you you still have to be married? No, no. no. And even when I landed 14 years ago, I realized everyone's living together. It's just not, you know, it's it's a rule, but it's not sort of governed to that respect that long ago, right? Um, now it's all good, right? So, you know, came over and helped start a radio station called Virgin Radio Dubai, which was Richard Branson's first Middle Eastern radio station, the Middle East sort of Africa. And, um, you know, we it, it was crazy. Didn't know anyone, packed up the bags, came out and... Yeah, it took a while. It was it was a shock. It was a total shock to the system. You know, you leave you leave little old Sydney or Australia, and for a lot of us, you don't we don't leave we don't go too far. You know, we go to Bali, yeah. we go to New Zealand, we got. For a Sydney boy, we go up the coast, like, to go to the other end of the world and, you know, not really know anyone and try to start a radio station in a foreign country was pretty, pretty difficult. Um, and then, yeah, just basically we kicked off a radio station. I was doing the afternoon show and I was a music director at the time. And then things just played in that in, within the first two, two years, they asked me to do mornings, which I had rejected many times. I didn't want to do the breakfast show, just didn't want to wake up, you know, the hours kill you. And then eventually um, did the morning show and then it's been – you know, the, the biggest show in the region for the last sort of, you know, 13 years now, which is it's a bit of a staple in the country. You know, people know it. People love the station. People love the show. I've got two co-hosts, Pretty Malik. She's a, she's Indian from New York City. And I've got uh, Big Rossi, who's uh, li- from Liverpool, England. Um, and then I've got uh, two producers, Eddie, who's from Kenya, and then Nala, who's Turkish from Syria. So 
we were we're a pretty cool like just you know cool little click we play lots of music and we have fun and we've been doing that show non-stop so you know that it, it's all been fun and games but you look back at it and you know i think we wanted to touch on sort of the, the mental health side of things I, yeah. I think and you know when you when you do pack up your bags and and you move away from your family it, it's mm. a, without knowing it it's a pretty big move like yeah yeah i had never had anxiety in my life i had no idea what it meant and felt like I don't think I'd even heard the word to tell you the truth, or I thought it meant something else. Like mm. when people say you're anxious, say, yeah, whatever, toughen up, you'll be all right. Like you yeah, just yeah. say that, right? And then I think it was about three months before my first child was born with my ex-wife, I was living in a foreign country, had like little money, didn't have a lot of cash on me. You know, I, I came over to Dubai with about, you know, $3,000 to my name. So we, we were expecting a baby. I was in this new job, new country, knew absolutely no one, had just sort of met, you know, with the ex-wife about a year prior. We've mm. got a baby on the way. And that was when I started to feel anxious. And it was just this feeling of dread. And I, and I couldn't pick it. I didn't know what it was. Like, as in, you know, you just I felt like I was dying. I thought, oh, shit, I'm dying here. This is, you know, I remember just thinking to myself, there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I had that for good like solid anxiety without really knowing what it was for a good two years right Mm. like there were points where i couldn't even go do my radio show like i created this fear of doing radio now the reason why is because i told myself what happens if i can't do radio one day oh my gosh i've got kids to support oh my gosh i'm gonna go Mm. so radio became this thing that i must do but because i was going to do it it made me feel scared so i was doing the show but at the same time i was just petrified it was this weird feeling of feeling anxious right um and that was my first sort of dose of what anxiety is and, and and what it what it is still today anxiety will never leave you i think anyone that has anxiety mm-hmm. it's never just going to be like it's gone forever and for out i be the leader of this world it's more yeah. about like yeah. you start to understand it a little bit more you can control it it will still throw its ugly head at you sometimes and win oh, yeah. but you will also be able to fight back and do what you've got to do because you understand it a lot more brown pop Grow Clinics are proud supporters of this podcast and proud supporters of our head. Thank you. I love my head now. We've talked about this a lot on this podcast, but they really do change lives. They've certainly changed ours. We don't mind, well, I don't love getting my photo taken full stop, but it's a whole lot easier when you've got some hair. Absolutely. And they're leading the way in hair loss treatments in Australia and New Zealand, and they offer the most refined hair transplant technique available with natural results guaranteed. People cannot tell that I've had a hair transplant. No, you can't tell at all. I had somebody ask whether they could pull up my hair to see whether it was real the other day. Was that your wife? No comment. (laughs) They've got clinics in (laughs) Brisbane, Gold Coast, Melbourne, Sydney and Perth, and it's the ultimate hair growth experience where you're taken care of every step of the way and it is completely pain-free as well. Question, did you let them pull it? Um, Yes. Oh, beautiful. Check out growclinics.com.au to book a free consultation for more information and let them help you and please tell them that Brown Park sent you. Hey, big shout out to Manscaped who have come on board the Brown Park podcast. Have you used it? Have you done it? Indeed, I have. Have Indeed. you used the lawnmower? Of course. It's got a torch on it. I mean, it's, I've, it's the first time I've ever seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find it? So good. I didn't even nick myself once. How beautiful is that? Really? I've been a big advocate of the nose trimmer. See, I, I, I hadn't used a nose hair trimmer before the weed whacker. Um, yes. And I've used that as well. And it's just a delight to use. It's a bit tickly. You get a bit of a... But it's great. But it doesn't at all hurt. I was expecting it to hurt. and There is zero pain involved. Can I tell you what else I did with it? Uh-oh. I did the uh, the hair in between my two eyebrows with, with oh, the weed whacker. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> zoo, 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 zoo. I got rid of the mono... Work? Yeah, it worked. Worked the treat. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, at the moment, uh, Manscaped are giving all Brown Park listeners the opportunity to get 20% off 
all products and free shipping with the promo code BROWNPARK20 if you go along to their website, manscaped.com. So not only can you get yourself like the lawnmower or the weed whacker, you can get yourself a bunch of lotions and other things to maybe make that downstairs area smell a little bit better. You know, just before the do-do-do-do, you give it a bit of a zhuzh-zhuzh-zhuzh. I feel sorry for your wife. <laughs> I don't. It smells like a candy factory. <laughs> I do if you call it all that. Anyway, uh, go to manscaped.com, use the code BROWNPARK20 and get yourself 20% off Manscaped products uh, and free shipping at the moment. And thanks to them for coming on board. Brown Park. Did you have one moment that was your turning point essentially where you said, oh, I'm actually struggling here and did you do anything about it? Um, I don't think, for me it was more like, you know, and, and it's a running thing on the radio show right now. We've, we've had it for years. Is I'm, a, I'm a health hypochondriac, right? Like, so, and this is where the anxiety kicked off. Like, this is where it was because I, I had a blocked ear once, right? I just had this blocked ear yeah. and it never went away. But the reason why it never went away, I realized, is because I said to myself, imagine if this blocked ear never goes away. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then it never went away because I the mind is so strong it can create yeah. this thing it can it can it can literally create ailments in your body it's hilarious because i, I know a guy who's got a, a problem with his neck yeah and i literally and it's funny you should mention this I, I, I a few weeks back i was like man imagine being imagine living with that every day and having that kind of pain in your neck where you couldn't control it and yeah. you know you, you're constantly in pain and my neck's gone and i'm in constant pain <laughs> And I, okay, I so reckon I'll, I'll it on myself, you, right? So that, that it's, it's one, if anyone is watching or listening to this, just know that you can create an ailment. You can create a thing in your body, which is real. Like yeah. you're really feeling it. You're feeling it, yeah. But it's created by your mind. Now, I have gone through over the, the 10 years, I, have, I, I mean, bless my, my, my wife, who I just recently married. She's been with me for the last eight years. I, I have told her, I have predict, I've said I've got cancer before. I've said I've got Al- <laughs> Alzheimer's. I've gone through, like, for three months of my life, these these forearms were numb, numb, right? Really? Yeah. I convinced myself that I had multiple sclerosis. I went and got a brain scan, right? Yeah. And as soon as I got the results that you're okay, it went away. Anyway. It went away. Yeah. It's the mind is so powerful. So my anxiety sort of stems from that. And the reason yeah. why it goes there after talking to people and understanding more about it is because these are things that are going to basically shut me down to not be able to pre- supply for my family, for my children, mm. for my wife, for my parents or whoever else it is, right? So it's this stigma of like, I must keep going. Nothing's going to stop me but I have these things that are trying to stop me and it freaks me out. So yeah. that's where my anxiety sort of sits, you know? You also, and I don't know whether you want to touch on this and we can cut this if you don't want to, but you also went through a marriage breakdown in the middle of that when you had two kids and they were back in Australia and you were still in Dubai working. Yeah, so I went through a, like a horrific divorce. Mm. If anyone is thinking about getting a divorce, don't do it. It is the last resort. Your last resort in life is a divorce when you're married. Just know that. If you have tried everything under the sun, okay, you've tried everything. Yeah. Okay, go look at it. But don't just throw in the towel because you want to throw in the towel. Um, we went through a, a, a brutal divorce, my, my ex-wife and I. We're on better terms now, 10 years later, eight years, nine years later. Um, But going through a a, a horrible divorce, going through and already having anxiety and then that being on top of it was, it was, it was brutal when you've got your kids involved as well. But it's interesting. It was a different, it it made me stronger as well. It's, it's, it's Mm. a weird thing. I thought that it was going to crumble me and break me down, but it actually made me real strong. It made me a lot stronger, made me like sort of who I am today, Mm. um, and there's this quote that I actually got tattooed on me, which says, they tried to bury you. They didn't know you were a seed, which was like in those hard times where they just throw you into the ground, you just keep growing. You know what I mean? Like you keep pushing yeah. yourself up. And well, I remember uh, talking to you through those moments and, and like your resilience within that was, was quite admirable because literally you, it, it was hell. You've it got was your hell. two kids and, and they're not there and you were trying to vie for custody and whatever. I won't go into the fine details, but I remember just thinking at the time, man, how you're managing to keep it together and still doing your show and, 
you know, because breakfast radio, you have to be happy. And that's what I was going to say. You say you're going through all this this crap, but yet having to put on this persona when you go on air and be happy and vibrant and put everything else aside. I don't know how either of you can just shut off from your personal life and then just go into this new mode. It's it's interesting, but like that, it's actually a bit of an escape. So I used to enjoy doing the show because it would just turn your mind off that for like the three hours. You just be able to get on with it. You're, so, you're not acting, but you're just like show light. It's performance. Let's go. Let's do this. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know, it's like a Broadway person who's got to do a show a hundred nights in a row. You know, he's probably it's- gone through some ish, but he's got to get on stage. He turns it on. He does his do show. It again. And you know, yeah, I feel I feel like that. I feel like you can almost be someone else for three yeah. hours, and you can just shut everything off and just do yeah. your show. And maybe that's not just a radio thing too, because even in you know my day to day life, I can be pissed off, upset, and then I get into the office, and then it's like, all right, different people. I, I have to show up for these people. So yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of get it, but um, how you guys can actually completely separate yourselves and actually sound, you know, like life is great is you know, oh, it's not easy. Yeah, it's- craft. It's not easy. Like, it, you know, sometimes there's moments where you're like, oh, man, I can't do this. But, you know, you just want to turn up. You want to rock up. You know, you've got people, like you said, depending on you. So, you know, when you do a show and people listen to it, you know that, you know, you want to entertain them and you want to put a smile on their face when they're driving to work or whatever it is else they're doing. So let's go from Breakfast Radio. Yep. Which you're still doing to this date. Yep. To um, you, you had a weight loss journey or an, and a fitness journey. Did Dion just have a sip of the beer, as you I said? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, man, I'm into fitness, fitness beer in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, it's, it's okay, so we're not talking about mental health. This, this brand which we've created, Fade Fit, came from a mental health side of things. So I was probably, like, at one of my lowest moments, just mentally wasn't feeling it. Went and saw like, you know, psychologists, hypnotists, you name it, been there, done that, right? For mm-hmm. anything, just to wanting to make you feel better. When you're feeling like shit, when you're feeling down, if someone told you eat this turd on the ground, it's going to make you feel better, you would do it. You're in that yeah. moment where you just mm. are looking for anything to make you feel better, right? Yeah. So I was, I was at that moment, I was on like some type of antidepressant or something, which I'd been on for like three months. And this is, this is going back about probably nine years ago. It's all a bit of a blur sometimes Mm -hmm. about eight eight or nine years ago. And I realized I was on it for about two months and I just, it, it was making me maybe feel a little bit better, but like, I felt like it wasn't doing much. So I went and started to go to the gym it actually started off by just running. I started running mm. and I, and, and I realized that after I did a little run, I came back, I felt better. I was like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, I felt better, but it only lasts for about maybe three hours. Mm. So I would go for another run in the afternoon and then I'd come home and I'd feel better again. And by the time I got to bed, it sort of crept up the anxiety mm. again. But I, 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 I realized that, like going to the gym or just getting some type of fitness in, it was making me feel physically but also mentally better. So I started doing it more often, right? I just kept going to the gym. I was probably – I was going too much. I think I was going, you know, twice a day, every day because hmm. I knew that it was giving me this high that I needed. Yeah. So whilst I was doing that, I changed the way that I ate because I started reading up on what sugars can do on your body and, you know, obviously fat and being overweight and diabetes and just the mental side of being overweight as well. So I started training a lot and eating really well. And I, at, at the time that I started this, I was 128 kilos. I was huge, right? Um, I'm only five foot ten, and I was 128. I was just fat, like I was just fat. And and you know, I, I end up dropping over a period of about you know 14 months. I got down to 89 kilos. That was my wow. lowest. I remember breaking the 90 and being really super happy. And I was six packed out and all guns blazing. And I felt like an Adonis. And, you know, apart from physically feeling, looking good, I was mentally a lot better. Yeah. Um, mm. I think it brought a lot of self confidence to me. Um, I think also you know, the release of your endorphins and all that, like the, you know, the actual scientific side of what's going on when you're, when you're healthier has had an effect on me. So 
I lost all this weight and then a lot of my followers and fans out this way were like, how did you do it? And I used to inbox them a lot on social media, Facebook, Instagram and all that. Mm. And then it started getting like, I was getting like hundreds a week. So then I started a, a seminar, I did a free seminar once in Dubai about six, seven years ago. And it was a seminar where I brought psychologists, nutritionists, health experts, trainers all together and a couple of motivational speakers uh, one of my buddies, Sujit, who's paralyzed from the chest down, but he's a personal trainer and he doesn't stop. And another gentleman who was a friend of mine. So we did this day and we called it Fade Fit. Now, the reason why we called it Fade Fit was because I used to use that hashtag when I was at the gym on my social media. I used to say Fade Fit. That's all I used mm. to say. When I looked at the hashtag, it had been used thousands of times, but not just by me, by other people. So people that were trying to get their fitness or going on their own health journey were using this hashtag. And I was like, wow, that's so freaking cool, man. So we called the seminar day Fade Fit. We had 2,500 people register. We could only accept 700. 700 people rocked up. It was sponsored by Reebok. I got Reebok to put in all the cash. We made it free for everyone on the day. And we just did like this eight-hour day of just really like – just happiness, motivation, education, people left in tears, people left restarting their life again. And that was really the conception of what Fade Fit was. And it was sort of like it came off my journey of going through anxiety but then finding health to, 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 mm. to find an out. Now, health and fitness is not, the, it's not a 100% going to you know, get, you, get rid of your anxiety, but it's mm. going to freaking help you. And I guarantee you there is nothing more that's going to help you than and getting out, looking after yourself and getting some fitness in. Well, I know um, Tony Robbins, I think it's Tony Robbins, or someone said that emotion is created by motion. And that's all, always sort of resonated with me because I know that when I'm feeling flat, that when if I get out and move, it definitely makes me feel better. So. There's been a study done recently for depression, <clears throat> and that's what I battle. Um, and as little as a 20-minute walk every day helps your depression. Yeah. So true. It's I, true. I need to go for a walk. <laughs> I, need to, <laughs> I, need, I need to walk more. <laughs> But you need, you need to do it. Like one thing that I've now realized, I'm 42 now, right? And one, one, mm. one thing that I've realized now is that my fitness and my health come first. So yeah. where I used to, I'll finish my radio show and then I'll have a bunch of meetings for the company or I'm doing appearances or whatever I've got to do. Mm. I would, I used to like, the gym was probably fourth down the list where I used to just have to fit all my other work in now. Yes. I've stopped doing that straight after the show at 10.30 to 12. That's my time. That's my gym time. And people sometimes go like, if we've got a meeting or I've got a, something that I've got to get to, like just miss the gym. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to the gym because I want to be big. It's mentally sets me right. Like that's mm. what makes me the person that I am. I, without it, I wouldn't be able to do it. Do you know what I mean? I can't function. Yeah, so much sense. You get yeah. me? And so yeah. like that, that 20 minutes – or an hour or whatever it is that you, you want to do, like you've got to find the time. So if, you, if you're if you suffering through whatever it is, like don't – you you really got to set going to the gym or going for a run or doing something as a medicine. Like it is a medicine. So mm. if you were on meds, would you miss your meds? You wouldn't. You do mm. the same with your, with this. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here in the Maldives right now, been here for six nights. I've gone to the gym uh, three out of the six right? Yeah. And people are like, you're crazy, you're on holiday. It's, it's like a medicine for me. I yeah. need to do it. I need to have it in my system. It makes me feel better. So the whole Fade Fit journey, that's what it's about. It's, we, we are a company now where we're, we're the, one of the bigger snack, healthier snack options out this way. So we have healthier little proteins and kids snacks. We're hopefully going to get them in Australia by the end of the year as well. But we're, 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 we're a company where we're producing healthier options for you, be it mm. organic milk, healthier snacks, whatever it is. But the, the base of it is it's more about a bit of a community and a movement to, to help people. In, similar to what you guys are doing with this, like just speaking more about mental health. We, mm. 10 years ago, you couldn't talk about this, man. Like, no, you no, couldn't. You couldn't. really couldn't. You'd be <laughs> a, you'd be a, you know. I don't want to use a word, but you'd be a pussy if you're a man and you spoke up about feeling sad and depressed. Yeah. I, I put on I put on Twitter the other day, like I said, you know, we, we we take sick days off from work when we're not physically feeling well, but I feel like mental sick days should be okay to take as well. And I think we need to be more outspoken about that. Like 
you know, if you're not mentally feeling well one day, and it's to each discretion of what that could, people could take advantage of that as they take away sick days usually. But here, I don't know, in, 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 yeah, Dave? Oh, no, I was going to say my, my wife's company, uh, she works for finder.com.au. Um, they now have uh, mental health Shameless days. plug. Yeah, shameless plug. But uh, they now have mental health days. So uh, a certain number per year that you can take for whatever purpose. Awesome. They will not ask you. You can just have it if you need it. That's, yeah, and I think that's the way forward. Like I always say, I do, I do a lot of speeches out this way. I do a lot of these sort of talks. We're just talking about my journey and who I am and how I got to mm-hmm. what I'm doing. And you know, I always tell people that looking out into a crowd right now, if we were just talking to a crowd of a couple of 100 people, that there would be you know, probably anywhere between 10 to 20 people in this crowd right now that are just not feeling right. They know yeah, that they're not yeah. in the right spot. But we all mm-hmm. sit there and we have to pretend that everything's okay because we've got, that's what we have to do. We have to pretend everything's okay. And it's, it's okay not to be okay. I think, you know, we've said that a few times. It's, it's okay not to be okay. And I think just the more we speak about it, the more people like us three open up ourselves and, and how we feel and the journey that we've gone through, the better it is and the easier it is for the next person that's in line, you know? Brown pop. Once again, we've got to say thank you to our sponsors, Grow Clinics, for jumping on board the Brown Park podcast. Thank you, legends. Look, if your hairline is slowly creeping towards the back of your neck, uh, go and have a chat to the team at Grow Clinics. They've got a solution for every stage of hair loss, so just go and have a chat. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Exactly. I've had uh, a mate of mine the other day went and got the crown. He got that covered up, uh, and now it looks like he's never lost hair at all. Well, and I've got another mate booked in for August. He's getting it done too, so uh, look, we're... we're was once taboo to talk about, but I think now the discussion's open and uh, let's go get some hair, boys. Yeah, Grow offer the most refined hair transplant technique available with natural results guaranteed. They've got clinics all over the country, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Melbourne, Sydney or Perth. And if you can't make it in, you're listening to, say, this podcast in Broken Hill, uh, you can jump online at growclinics.com.au for a free consultation or for more information because they can do it over the phone. And that's G-R-O. Brown pop. We're on borrowed time because your wife's about to kill you because you're on a podcast on your honeymoon. Um, I want to bring up uh, some of your life achievements. So aside from Fade Fit, Fade Fit now is now a massive company. It's it's food, it's milk, it's kids' uh, exercise equipment, it's a yep. tennis camp, yep. it's a gym, it's a yep. movement. Yep. But uh, I want to talk about your own personal highlights outside of the company because you've met some fantastic people uh, you were lucky enough to, uh, you know, meet one of the coolest people in the world before he went and slapped someone. Uh, he helped you with your engagement, Will Smith. Like you've had many highlights. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't, you know, I get back from this holiday and I'm on the top of the Seven Star Hotel, the helipad, hosting a Mayweather fight with Floyd Mayweather. Oh, yes. Like, nice. Like the, yeah, Dubai has this thing where it just attracts the extraordinary things and it doesn't stop. So being in that sort of area of the world, what one thing that I realised is when I left Australia, and I love and I love home, home will always be home, but you then realise how far away Australia actually is because, yeah. you know, you realise once you move to this side of the world, you're like, oh, like, you know, the Maldives was a, it's a three and a half hour flight. We go to the UK in six hours you know, you go, everything's just so central, yeah. right? If I want to go to Bali, it's, you know, whatever. But I'll just show you what my wife's now moving the luggage because we're checking out. There she is. Hi, <laughs> Wifey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Not a terrible only- view. Just, you're just showing off the view again, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> Not only am I doing a podcast on the honeymoon, she's actually getting all the luggage into the car to take back. Sorry, bra- bravo. Bravo, <laughs> bravo, Thanks, Chris. Thanks, bravo. Um, so, yeah, like... Okay, so Will Smith, love the dude, absolute legend. I know what he did was absolutely stupid. Um, yeah. I've had many encounters with Will Smith in front of cameras, behind cameras. He helped yeah. me propose to my my fiance. He didn't have to do it. We've spoken on the phone. We've done all this. The guy's legit an amazing guy. I've seen him deal with people without anyone around, mm. and to see how he is with people is extraordinary. Uh, whatever ha- happened recently he's stupid, he's wrong, he shouldn't have hit someone, but hey, yeah. let's move on. Um, yeah. The, you know, the likes of just anyone to any, like, it's weird, like, I got to introduce the Pope on stage here, like, the Pope, 
It's like, it's, <laughs> how does that go? I mean, how do you how do you introduce the Pope? Oh, it was pretty okay. Seventy thousand people stadium and about one hundred and fifty people on the outside in Abu Dhabi, mm. and it was such a special moment because we're in a Muslim world where the Pope is coming to do a sermon, right? To, and yeah. like, this is all religions from around the world. It was just perfect, and you know, the crowd were pretty loud. But then, like, one of the organizers was like, "Chris, we want to, um, you know, the the Pope's ten minutes late, so." We just want you to like uplift the crowd a little bit. Like, let's get them a little bit loud. And I'm like, put your fucking hands up. <laughs> you were well, the Pope's hype girl. I like it. That's exactly what I said. Well, I, I mean, what would you like me to do? And they're like, we just want them to make some more noise. Like, let's get let's get the atmosphere going. And I'm like, all right. So I grab grab the microphone. I'm like, let's make some noise. And like, it was just, I'm like, did I just say let's make some noise at a Pope attending? Yeah. You know? um, I love it. But yeah, it's been, it's, you know, as I said, like there's been so many milestones that, you know, that we've got to do here, which again, like from the celebrities that sort of rock up and hanging out with Mike Tyson, he was, you know, he was, he's a cool one. I'm trying to remember all the guys that have come through. Like we literally yeah. get everyone come through this, to, to, through the city, which is, which is pretty brilliant. And then, yeah, like uh, last year or the beginning, yeah, end of last year, I ended up getting a, a Madame Tussauds wax figure put up in place, which was pretty, you know, epic. They say it's when you immortalize. And so that was sort of like a pinch myself moment where I've like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, like not that my daughters who are 12 and 10, they sort of looked at it and went, yeah, you look more musclier there than you do in real life. I was going to say they didn't do like the, the 126 kilo version of Chris today. No. <laughs> no, no, what's crazy when when I was when I was getting that done, I only got told like six weeks notice that I was going to get this Madame Tussauds wax figure and I had to fly out to London to get it sort of fitted. Yeah, and, and I was like, shit, six weeks. I, it get was like, I'm, yeah, yeah, I had to get ripped. Like that's literally what I wanted <laughs> to do because I remember being a little bit chunkier than I was. So I ended up having this six week fitness regime to try to get as fit as I could, but um. You know, it's been it's been um, it's been epic. Um, no regrets regarding the the whole anxiety mental side of things, which is one of the reasons obviously that we wanted to chat. Was I just think if anyone's suffering, going through it, which you 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 like, you're always going to go through it, but it's going to get a lot easier. Like I think there's moments where you become so scared. I know that I was just so scared, and like. It's this, it's this feeling that you can't explain until you've had it, right? And yeah. if you've had it you, and you're hearing this, you'll understand. But just know, like, it's not there forever and there are totally brighter days. And, mm. you know, you just got to shift through them. And it's okay to go back a couple of stages and then move forward for and then come back. It, it doesn't always have to be this progression. And, you know, I teach my girls the same thing with social media around and what everyone's putting out there. Everyone's lives look so freaking fabulous when – I know for a fact they're not all like that. You, you know? see the highlight we're, reels. Yeah, yeah, we're just showing exactly all the good things. There's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of hardship, but just take it day by day. And you know, if you ever need anyone to to, to ask, you know, ask those family, those friends, call the numbers, like whatever you got to do. But you're not alone, and we're we're all going through it. Like mm. everyone, anyone that tells me that they're not suffering from some type of mental health in some time of their life. I don't know. I feel like you know most of us do. And then I heard Jewel once say, I think it was on the Joe Rogan podcast, but she said, whenever I go through a moment, I just picture putting a seatbelt on and going, I'm going to strap in because I know it's not going to last, but yeah. I, I just need to strap in and get through this this period. So that's always resonated with me a bit that mm. these times we're going through uh, are short-lived yeah. and there's going to be another side to this that you're going to get through and just look back and go, I got through that, so what can I get through next? It's totally true. Just know that tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and things are going to be okay. Hey, mm. you know what I love to do if I'm feeling weird? I go either jump in the water or I have a shower. Showers showers are just so good. Showers are underrated. Get yeah. in the shower. If you're feeling anxious or you feel like you're just going too much or whatever it is, go help yourself in the shower. Have a nice relaxing shower. Take a few deep breaths and then get out. Do you ever go back and listen to your st- your songs that you released as well? Just to, to make- oh, hey, hey, can I just say before we jumped onto this podcast, I went, all right, I've got to listen to these two songs that he did. <laughs> so, so I listened to them like five minutes before we jumped on this. <laughs> just <laughs> love it. Uh, Good job. Listen, Good job. When when you have one of the biggest shows in the region, you can make yeah. a song go number one on iTunes pretty quickly. 
Yeah, oh man, I did the same thing with the country song. I got number yes. two, and it was terrible. I remember that. I remember, <laughs> yeah. The, like, yeah. No, I released these two songs. They're on iTunes somewhere. Look, Chris Fade up, K R I S F A D E, and have a listen to these semi awful but okay songs. It's funny, man. It's very good. Uh, well, look, we're going to let you go because you're on your honeymoon. You're in the Maldives, and you're about to leave. Um, Chris Fade. Follow you on social, uh, like, you know, we've been mates for years, but uh, you've motivated me through times as well, man. So thank you very much. Um, and, and and thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you, my man. Thank you, guys. I'll keep doing what you're doing. An honour to be on it. And thank you again. I didn't radiate too much jealousy in that, did I? <laughs> <laughs> The good thing is that it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy and I'm very happy for him because he has set out to achieve a dream and he really went and did it. And has, and I, I see the amount of work that he puts into his life and it is amazing. He is just hustling day in, day out. What surprised me is not just radio anymore for him. He's actually building a, a brand. So he's got his fitness brand. He's got his radio brand. Yeah, I, I can tell you from being inside radio, it pays to have external interests just in case. Oh, does it? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> a podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, a big thank you to our sponsors, Grow Clinics. If you want to find out more about them, go to growclinics.com.au and all the details for that are in the show notes of this podcast. Anything else to add? Um, we've come up with a new hashtag, so that'll be in the description as well. It's hashtag Christo, not Jen. Jealous. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you later. The Brown Box Podcast.